Today we're going to talk about scalping the five minute chart with FTMO. So anybody that's interested in trading Forex and wants to scalp, this might be of interest to you. I'm going to break down the trades that I took today, but I'm also going to explain these lines on the chart and how this has made my life a little bit easier. So stick around to the end of the video if you want to see that. Now, if you look at the left hand corner at the bottom, you can see that I'm up just over 2% for the day. And what I took was three trades. So you can see one trade here, another one here, and another one here. So let's explain why I did what I did. Now, when I was first looking at the chart today, it was just before 8.30 and this was around here. And you could see price was starting to move down even though price was clearly in an uptrend here, but it could have been indicating a change in direction here. It was for a short term. And it was retesting the area right here, coming in, retesting this area. But you need a bigger confirmation. Some people may get in early when they see a rejection like that. And a lot of people would have been looking for sells. So there might have been a lot of orders in at that time. And then what I would do before you even consider hitting buy or sell on this, what you do is you go to FTMO. And if you're not familiar with them, this is where I do the two week uh, challenges until you're ready to do a real challenge. And they have this amazing feature, which is the economic calendar. You click onto it and it's going to tell you about all the news that's coming up for the day. And at the time, there was uh, news for the US dollar and the Canadian dollar. There was a variety of things going on at the time. But it wasn't high impact news. It wasn't listed as such, but I wanted to pay close attention to what was happening. And of course, this long candle, long bullish candle happened right then. And anybody that would have fell for getting in at this point on an early entry, they all lost. All the liquidity was grabbed, everything happened. So this would have caught a lot of people at that moment. But then we had this pin bar reaction up here. And I was curious to know what was going to happen. So if you seen earlier there, I was on trading view. You can see here on the monthly chart, this is what I seen. I seen how price came in to this area of previous structure. We know it was in a clear downtrend. This was looked like a pullback, retesting the area. When I seen that, then I ended up getting an engulfing pattern here. You can see the bearish engulfing. Very strong pattern here. Nice rejection. I ended up getting in on the trade and I was originally targeting to fill most of this void. I think I actually might have actually been targeting the low. Now, I stepped away from the computer for a few moments. And when I came back, of course, I seen this strong wick rejection. And I seen that more than 50% of this void was filled. And I thought, okay, maybe there's a chance it's going to try pushing up higher again before continuing to go down. And I didn't want to take that chance, so I ended up closing it with a small profit. And then price continued to move further down. And then I seen price came up again, and it was retesting an area. I ended up getting in on the trade, and I think I was originally targeting around 50% of this void. And 
I ended up closing it a bit early because I seen price playing back and forth. And of course, again, if I would have held on to it, I would have hit the target. But at this point, I was happy with what I was at. I closed the trade down and that put me at 1.75% for the day. And I was fine with that. I didn't need anything more. But then I seen another opportunity. Price pulled up and you can see several candles here. Now, I wasn't sure if this was going to be a pullback or not, because oftentimes you can see several candles, you know, small pullbacks, several candles, but I was still sure that we were going to have a bearish bias. Now, price came up and it was reacting to these areas here. I got in on the trade and I ended up just closing it down with a small profit. And that ended up putting me at just over 2% for the day. And I'm sure there's something else I could have tried, but 2% in my opinion is really well for one day worth of trading when you're trying to hit 5% for a two week challenge. If you were trading a real account and you had a $200,000 account, 2% is plenty. You may consider shutting down for the rest of the month. Now, I want to tell you about these lines on the chart. When scalping, the last thing you want to do is try to calculate everything. I know they have online calculators now to make things simpler. If you're trading a higher time frame, it doesn't really matter. You've, you've got plenty of time to do all this. But when you're scalping, the last thing you want to do is try to complicate anything. We want to make things as easy as possible. So how I do that is I use a tool called a trade panel because this thing here is complete garbage far as I'm concerned. This is what I'm using right now. So if you go to the market and you type in Runwise, you can see the free version that comes up right here called Trade Panel Pro. Auto and trailing stop loss, virtual hidden stop loss, auto lot size, multiple take profits, partial close and close all. So it has lots of tools. The virtual hidden stop loss thing is really nice. Now I have it marked on mine where you have to show a stop loss and you have to show a take profit because some brokers aren't going to allow you to trade without one. So there's an option to choose it with or without and I choose with. But the cool feature about it is that it's not exactly the place where you're going to actually have your real stop loss and take profit. So when it's showing on the chart, your broker is going to see it's going to be listed where, with your trade. So if your trade history, your stop loss and your take profit, it's going to be on the chart as well. The broker can see it and those are real. What the broker doesn't realize is you have a virtual stop loss and take profit that is your real stop loss and your real take profit. So let's just say use this as an example so when you get in on a trade here and your stop loss where you plan to have it is right there and let's just say your take profit is right here what the broker is going to see is it's going to be completely different for them so your stop loss is going to be much higher that's where they're they're going to see it and your take profit is going to be much further away too. So if you feel they're targeting your stop loss, then this is the tool for you because they're not likely going to go after it at that point. It's going to be too far away. As soon as your trade hits your virtual stop, lo or stop loss or your take profit, wherever that may be, which is your real number, then your trade will close. 
and all you're doing is the only thing you have to worry about is you know when you're getting down to like the last 10 20 seconds before your trade you've already got it set in here that whatever your risk to reward is so mine's set for a one to two so that's set no matter what i choose now all i need to know is where my stop loss is going to be so when i get down to the last few seconds you know you're you're dealing with the last 10 seconds of the candle you have everything set already all you need to know where your stop loss is going to be so let's just say if it was 10 pips so i would come over here hit my stop loss i'd come up here type in 10 pips save it and then just as the candle's about to close i would hit a sell or a buy if I was going up. And this is how I get as precise as possible. I have my risk already predetermined in here. So there's no simpler way to do this. And it's going to make your life so much easier. I know it did for me because there was too many times where my calculations were slightly off because when you're trying to punch it in on a online calculator and by the time you execute it, or by the time that you enter it in here and hit the button. It's already changed enough where now your risk of 1% might be higher. So this way it keeps it as close as possible. I hope this helps you. Let me know if it does. And if you have any questions about this, let me know. And until next time, bye for now.